Hot oh, One, the Hip Hop and R&B. We have legend, icon, fashion superhero, Dapper Dan. <laughs> Harlem, I like that, I like Harlem, that, I like that. You like, that, like, like all that. that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I like Harlem that. royalty, Dapper Dan is in the building today. Wow. And author, now author. Yes. Of new book. Yes. Hi, Dap. How you doing, Angie? I'm so excited to be here with you. Why have we never done this before? I don't know. I'm, I think because I was hiding underground. You know, they ran me underground, so I was underground for 20 years. What were you doing under there? What? Well, I would, uh, because the uh, brands wouldn't let me operate, and I was, like, really upset I had to come back. So uh, I would, like, still create clothes, drive from New York to Chicago, and hit every city, you know, all the major cities, and uh -huh. come back, and then... Hit all of the cities going but wait, to wait, Atlanta. All right, wait, I gotta stop you. Right, we gotta go back. We gotta go back. Yes. So you're on fire, right? Like you're sell you've sold clothes to everybody. You've made iconic I mean, where's the picture that I just saw that I was like, this is the the my you know the Rock Hem jacket. Mm -hmm. Where's the Rock Hem jacket? I want everybody to see it in that. Yes. That is, is a, so. That jacket is, is so important classic. to hip hop. Yes, it's so important to hip hop. Yes, I mean you had all the success and then they shut you down. Shut me down. That has shut to me be. Down, Angie. That has to be. You're saying it like it's no big deal, and you go and you're on the streets, but that has to be an awful time for you, right? Like it has to. Be, you're hot, and you know what I mean. And then, how are you surviving? And you know, Angie, I grew up in the '50s and the '60s, so uh -huh. this is what we expect. We expect opposition like that. You do. So like today. Young guys today, they would be on fire with something like that. You know, it, today we can expect more things to happen for us than back then. Mm -hmm. So it was just like another day dealing with the system. Yeah. You know, but uh, I survived it. And who was the first person you, you designed for? That's a good question. It, 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 it might have been... You don't it remember. might have been LL was either the first or the second, somewhere like that. How did LL see it from, like, some local... LL, Rich. like, no, a gangster bought it. All yeah, the rappers initially was bought by gangsters because I only catered to gangsters in the beginning. You know, the hip hoppers didn't have any money back then. You right, know? right. The rappers yeah, had no yeah, for real yeah, bread, yeah. right? That was like, that was like the, the birth of hip hop back then. So they wasn't getting money like that. The only ones who had money back then was the, uh, the fat boys. Wow. They're the only ones who came to the store with crispy one hundred dollar bills. Wow! The, so yeah. they, so they were probably them or LL. You think? Yeah, yeah, them or them or LL. Yeah. And then, how much longer than that was this Rakim? Did this happen? Oh, uh, the Rakim painter. was shortly after that. It yeah. was just like they just started rolling in after that. It was a domino. But, like hip hop does that, you know. Somebody, you know, it's the one up thing. Hustlers do it, and hip hop artists do it. Mm. Yo, he got that. I gotta step it up. I gotta step it up. You know, it's still happening. It's yeah, still, it's still happening. It still happens all the time. Yeah, and it's made a business for yeah. many people. Exactly, <laughs> for many people. Yes, it does. So when did you know? When were you like, yo, this? Did you always feel? Did you always have that confidence about your stuff, or did you all of a sudden see it on somebody and and think, oh, this is moving the well, you know. Culture. Angie, it started with me, you know. Um, all the hustlers that knew me, because I was like professional gambler in the street at the time, everybody liked the way I, rest, so I dress. So I was a big influence in Harlem already. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, because when you're gambling, people, you know, you want people to think you got a whole lot of money. And what were you to, gambling? Uh, dice. Dice, yeah. And cards. And you were nice? Yeah, yeah. excellent. <laughs> like, Amazing. Like, how nice? Like, making a living? Yes, uh, solely off that. Oh, wow. That's what I'm known for. People know me for that. Right. The clothes came later. They know me for Dancing Danny, Gambling Danny, and then Fashion Danny. That came, Dapper Danny came later on. That was always my name, but they didn't know that until I decided. I said, let me go and open up on the, who I am. Yeah. yeah. So you were just like this young Harlem cat. That And who taught you how to dress like this? And who taught you about fashion? Well, it was the older guys. Now, I watched them all the way coming up. So the the first influences for fashion was the jazz guys, you know, like the uh, the Rat Pack, Sammy Davis Jr., mm -hmm. Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, you know, um, that whole that whole team. They they set the pace. So you're little for the dance and dap in Harlem, and you're looking at the pictures of the Rat Pack and coming up with ideas. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Cause all the older guys, we oh, it's it's different now. Hip hop ushered in a a, a era where young men set their own pace. Uh -huh. But I grew up in an era where it was like, style came from the older guys and straight through. Yeah. Hip hop broke from that narrative completely. They Hip hop created something that was so amazing. You know, it, they just 
Yeah. Stop dead cold. Yeah. And then new something new came in. Hip hop did that, man. It was amazing. That's the a, music and as well as the uh, clothes. When when that started happening, would you? I mean, was there a point where you like upped your prices and realized your stuff was? Oh like, no, the prices were always up. From the beginning? Yeah, from day one. Really? Day one. What was your first? Do you remember your first piece that you got paid for? The first piece I got paid for was a, a Gucci jacket. Because early on, before I mastered the science of printing on leather, mm-hmm. we used to go down, I would get go down and get like complete bags from the Gucci store, mm-hmm. the garment bags, because they had to be long, mm-hmm. and um, like a jacket back then. Now, think in terms of money. A jacket back then, just a jacket trimmed with leather and the, the Gucci yoke, that would be like 2300 Mm-hmm. Now twenty three hundred back then. It's, so, it's a lot of it's 80s. a lot of money right now. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> twenty three hundred is a lot of money now for a jacket. Mm-hmm. So you had to buy the jacket. No, I didn't buy the jacket. I made the jacket. Only thing I bought was the bags back then until I mastered the science. Right after that, I say I can't work like this. I got to figure out a technique where I can print this myself. Once I did that, case closed, Angie. I started doing cars and furniture. I know. Whatever you so wanted, legendary. you know, baby. Baby carriages and everything, yeah. yeah. Did I, Rock I wish Rock, I wish hip hop artists was getting money because I always wanted to do an airplane. You haven't done an airplane yet. <laughs> no, they, Somebody no, could buy money. an airplane. They, yeah, they wasn't getting money like that. No. Drake doesn't Drake have a plane? Drake has a plane. Mm. Drake is the one. Well, I want to do my main man first. If I do a plane first, I told Floyd I got to do your plane. Floyd's got enough money to to do a yeah. He flew to do me his from, plane. Yeah, yeah. I flew in his his jet. Yeah, Floyd got it. I saw uh, yesterday. You know Misa. Right. Oh man, I love Misa. That's my little sister. So Misa, Misa Hilton, she's an incredible legend stylist herself. She posted a picture yesterday of her sitting in a, a car that she logoed out. She M she works for MCM. And she logoed out the seats and she hashtag was Dap taught me. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. she propped you up for wow. that. And it's true. You were like the you know you're the what, there's a coin there's a phrase for it. Is it logo mania or yeah logo mania? Logo That's mania. Right. That's right, Angie. Yeah. So 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 Misa took from that and she did her MCM. The, yeah. I guess somebody did the MCM. Yeah. Car, I like I like what we've been able what hip hop and fashion has done for us. You mm-hmm. know. I just want I just hope that we get our arms completely around it like we should have mm-hmm. i mean we well on the path like hip-hop is is i mean come on jay-z's on his way to being there we got guys that's getting ready to be billionaires yeah you know? i so think we jay is that. jay is officially a billionaire yeah. he could do a plane yeah <laughs> yeah he could do a plane <laughs> he could do a plane but i i think that we got left behind because you got to remember fashion what, what i was doing and hip-hop started both at the same time mm-hmm. you know and we got left behind with fashion, you know, because we didn't have, uh, when they ran me underground, we didn't have nobody to really know how to carry the torch after that. Mm-hmm. So we spent like maybe from the time I shut down to the time that, you know, all during when the, the other brands, the other minority brands opened up and they didn't, they didn't have the know-how then and the direction to know what we should have did. And we lost all that time. Yeah. That gave the, the European brands time to step in and take over. And so we lost all that. How did you know, how did, oh God, I got to read this book because I know there's so many gems in the book. Like I'm thinking about the day they shut you down and how Mm -hmm. did you get notified and who was the lead, who who led that initiative to shut you down? You You wouldn't believe it. It was like, it was, it was the biggest, let me, how would you describe it? It was like, the reason behind it couldn't be no bigger than this. Mike Tyson had a fight in my store. It was all over the news, Mm -hmm. everywhere. And um, it just went ballistic. Uh, that and then, about the and then that's when the the brand start taking notice. So they're like, "What's going on here?" I mean, you got a 19 year old heavyweight champion of the world knocking everybody out in a matter of minutes. You know, <laughs> and like, he knocked somebody out in front of Dapper Dance. Inside Dapper Dance, the fight start. Then outside, that that was like a killer dealer. And that led to, uh, I mean, it was. The biggest publicity I could possibly get and the and biggest also, disaster I could yeah. possibly get. What do you think about what some of the other people are doing now? I think I think of Kanye now because he's building something. I think Kanye has made possibly him and and and, and, and let's see, Virgil, mm-hmm. Kanye, those are the two main ones that's really attacking it. You know, but I don't know to what degree that Virgil owns the label, mm-hmm. but I know Kanye is like, he's he's in charge, you mm-hmm. know? Puff Daddy made a, a really big attempt 
but it was like on the tail end of it. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a struggle. But he came out with luxury items mm-hmm. that would give dignity to the brand. That people would say, "Yeah, I go up and I go to I go to the Met Ball." And but it, it was already streetwear. It was already cemented yeah, yeah, yeah. as streetwear. Yeah, and that's what right? happened. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We needed the luxury line huh. to raise the ball and to show the world like we got class on our own. Yeah. You know, we needed. Yeah, we needed low end, of course. Of course, P- yeah, people got to be able to afford certain luxury things. Line. I mean, the the music, our music and our culture demand that we have something on that line consistent with, our, with what we're doing out the effect we have it on the world so that was that was like a big deal wow i remember here when when you when your name started coming up again and you were doing this big deal with gucci when the, well, well when they jacked your whole thing and everybody stood up for you wow isn't that was amazing? it wasn't that an amazing was that an am, I, it felt amazing as a fan to watch people stand up for you yeah i couldn't imagine what that felt like for you oh man it was like Incredible, Angie. I grew up. I'm you know, me coming up with my first out, There wasn't no social media. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to relearn this, how this thing work. You know, <laughs> right? Is this <laughs> I thing had to on. get into this? I didn't know the power that it had, man. Yeah. And Twitter went in. Yeah. Twitter changed my life, man. Wow, that's so sweet. Twitter changed my life. They said, "Uh, uh-uh. uh, no, we know where that come from. No, we know where that come from. We ain't having it." Yeah. And it opened up a whole new world. Supreme. And Louis Vuitton, that collaboration that they that they did, right, that came out like uh, two years ago, right. Mm-hmm. And when they debuted that collection, and everybody who attended that show got a letter on their chair stating that this whole collection was inspired by Dapper Dan. Oh. so they didn't get no. And and I'm uh, you know we need to know that who who was inspired by who who did that who who was who led it that was, uh, that was part of, that was the brand itself. Uh-huh. You know, they had to do it so they didn't get no kickback because when you look at it, you can see it's all, I mean, you know, it's all evolved from what I did. Right? Yeah, but somebody They're had to take in. responsibility to be like, let's at least. Yeah, but it was all, it was stated on the letter, you yeah. know, and it was issued to everybody attending the show. So they didn't get any kickback. Now, Gucci had intended to give me credit. You know what I'm saying? But they feel, well, everybody know it. I don't even have to say it. This is inspired by Dapper Dan, you know? Yeah. And they didn't say it. They didn't say it. They didn't ask him. So they said, because of the controversy, they said, well, this is what we're going to do. Everybody has paid homage to Dapper Dan. And I get this second part. Everybody has paid homage to Dapper Dan, but nobody paid him. They said, yeah, we're going to change that. that. Okay. We're going to change that. So they came with a team from Italy. You know, they say, this is what we're offering. We're going to do a line with you, a Dapper Dan line with you. You get a percentage of that. Plus, we're going to allow you to set up a store in Harlem like you did back in the days, mm-hmm. right? And you can make anything you want with Gucci Fabrication, and we're going to be in part Have they ever done a deal like that with anybody, that you could do Never. anything you want? First time with- ever. Amazing. Wow. wow. Amazing. And now, Andrew, they have, like, this new change makers program mm-hmm. where we bring in all minorities in. We have like a minority vice president now. Yeah. Yeah. We got in all and they I want everybody to, to go right online and look up Dapper Dan and look up the oh. Gucci change makers so you can see what we're offering. Okay, but wait, let me just take you back for one second, Dan. Stay with me. Stay with me, Dan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so when you see all these people paying homage and the little notes on the card on the seat. Is that flattering or is that annoying because you're not getting paid? Like y'all everybody's getting paid here. You're paying homage to me, but I'm not getting. Does that is that you happy about that? Angie, is it flattering or is it? Angie, I love who you guys are today. We grew up with this. Yeah, it's like they ain't gonna give you no credit, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I had to like, oh, social media said, oh, I can do this now. I got a voice. Y'all are my voice now. Yeah. Some anything happen now, Angie gonna say, yo, what happened the other day? We ain't tolerating that. Right. I got a voice. I ain't had no voice. What, what could I say? Who would listen? You know? Yeah. Well, I got a voice now. I feel empowered. Good Your you. hip hop has came back and empowered me. Uh, That's amazing. Yes. God bless. So we were also happy for you, right? Then it was like, oh, they trying to they trying to take Dapper Dan's thing and not give him credit. We all stood up. This is crazy. Yes. Then all of a sudden they give you this deal and everybody's like, Yay, we're all happy and cheering and mm. going to the store. And by the way, the the store here in Tribeca by the station, uh, yes. they have a whole section, a whole Dapper Dan section. Yes, I've been yes, in there yes. many times, bought glasses, flip-flops, everything. Yeah. Um, 
and it was just a it was it, it just felt everybody was so happy for you and then this big gucci scandal happens and it just was i felt bad for you yeah i mean I, I, I wanted everybody to stand up and i thought it was i i understood everybody standing up and everybody protesting and backing up from it from the brand for a minute but aside from that i also felt like oh like this is supposed to be your mo- this big moment for you. Yes, yes, Angie. And it it gets yeah, sliced, got chopped, got chopped. chopped. But I can't get angry, Angie. You know mm-hmm. why? Because God does things sometimes we don't understand right away. Mm-hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Now we got this big change, and that brought ushered in this change makers program that Gucci is doing. He said, That's look, good. we got we got to start paying attention to this culture and doing right by this culture. Okay, let's say the blackface happened, right? What did you think when you first saw it? My first reaction? Mm-hmm. I had to think like my community think, what the hell is this? Mm-hmm. You know, I knew that it wasn't intentional because you don't use a billion dollar business as some little joke thing to disparage somebody. You don't, you don't jeopardize that. Mm-hmm. You know, that makes no sense at all. Mm-hmm. You know, so I knew that was an intentional, but I knew beforehand that our culture is very powerful now, and so everybody's embracing or what you want to call appropriating our culture. They're not going to get it right, you know. Mm-hmm. They're going to make mistakes, you know, and we should be happy like if they make a mistake because the moment somebody figures out our culture, like they figured out how to cook rice and beans and mm-hmm. and soul food, mm-hmm. we done. Yeah. You know, so we got to keep turning on. So I understand that they didn't get it right. That it was a cultural mistake. But, you know, if mistake, it doesn't matter if it's a mistake. If you kill somebody by accident or, or on purpose, they're dead, they're dead. Yeah. You know? So as a result of that there, you know, when you look at um, what's going on, I mean, this is not just with Gucci. This is across the board. Yeah, there was a whole bunch because of, Because yeah. they, they're, they're appropriating the culture. They're, mm-hmm. they're getting involved in the culture. It's so powerful. Everybody wants to tap into it. But now. But wait, so now you see it. You you feel a way like everybody else feels a way. Yeah, so what now is, next thing is I tell Gucci, I say, listen, man, I'm a black man before I'm a brand. Y'all got to come here, come to Harlem. I'm going to get some people from the corporate world, and so we can sit down and work this thing out. You got to tell these people, my people, exactly how what you how you going to address this problem. Mm-hmm. And the CEO of Gucci came to Harlem with his team, sat down with all these corporate people, what did, he, what did he think about it? He felt that it was a big mistake. I mean, the whole team, the whole team felt it was a big mistake. Mm-hmm. They didn't do it on purpose, you know, and um, they want to make amends. They want to do whatever they feel is necessary to fix the problem. Mm-hmm. And so they came to the Harlem. We went to the Red Rooster. We all organized all these corporate people that I have. I love the Red Rooster. Yeah. Side dark, sidebar. Yeah. Good. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Love Red Rooster. <laughs> yeah. So um, we got together and we ironed out a deal and said, well, we're going we gonna to concentrate on cultural inclusivity. Not appropriation, but cultural inclusivity. And so that's what we work in. And that's what the Change, pro- change Makers program is about. So our artists, are, you know, Wish everybody would go online to Dapper Dan or or Google Gucci's chain maker and see if you're happy about it. Mm-hmm. Make your own choice. Don't let nobody else make a choice for you. Look it up. Don't let somebody say, oh, man, they did that thing. I ain't messing with them. No, no. look it up and see what this means because with what Gucci is doing now, we need to take that to all the brands. Mm-hmm. You know? We need, to, we need to be in every room. You know, we can't change. We can't grow if we're not in every room. Mm-hmm. You know, the brands that fail, this is our opportunity to be inside and see the workings and how to go. Angie, we need to be global. This is a multinational global corporation we're talking about. We're not talking about local stuff. Mm-hmm. We're talking about global. This is our opportunity to have a foothold in a global business now. Mm-hmm. Our music is global. Why are we thinking local? They say, they say okay, they, they say, well, why don't we open up our own business? Angie, our culture is around the world, right? How long would it take us for we can get global distribution? You know, Kanye is fighting a major battle. And you can see from his experience and what's happening with him, it's not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to be inside to see how this works. Is he the furthest along, you think? Who, Kanye? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Kanye is the only one that I can say 
he's the primary. There are others that are involved. I can't testify that they're the primary. Mm -hmm. I know they're physical. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that they're out there, but I I can't say that he owns this or he owns that or he owns this. Mm -hmm. But I know um, Kanye is like he's out there with his brand and and Jay Z. You know, with Fat Farm and them. But I, I'm not talking that kind of level. I'm talking. No, I get that. You're luxury. not talking. I'm rock, talking about luxury. Luxury, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So we. We, you know what? We really owe what I would like to see happen. We need to get a commission of um, designers, people, strugglers in this game. We can't have advocates speaking for us. You know how would I, how could, how would you guys have a problem here? You know, y'all in in the music business, broadcast. You know, if you have a problem here. That's, it's not for me to go out there. It's for me to come to you and say, how can I help you guys address the problem? Mm -hmm. This is the this is what we're experiencing now. People who are outside the fashion are the ones who with the biggest voice, and that that's not right. Mm -hmm. First you do, you come to us and say, what is it that we can do? That's what an advocate's supposed to do. You come to us and say, what is it, how can we make it so that we can get a big foothold in that? You don't go tell us, go open up your own business like it's that easy. Mm -hmm. If you want to do it that way, you open it up and show us how it's done. Mm. But don't get on the radio or go on, on social media talking about start your own brand. I was in the, I was in the, I had to go from a three-story, from a table to a three-story building Rate it down and start at a table again, and you're going to tell me how to run this? You're going to get down there and one day and just say, yeah, start your own business? We're going to buy for you? Uh-uh, man. We want to sell everywhere. We want to sell in China. We want to sell in Southeast Asia. We want to sell in, 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 in Saudi Arabia. We want to sell all over the world. We ain't, we, we're not just here to just sell to each other. We want to sell global. Our culture is global. Mm -hmm. We're entitled to a benefits of global business. If our culture is global, and we are the we are the influencers. Why would we go, Angie? Why would we go back to the corner selling T-shirts on a table? Yeah, but when you say we, then let's take a company, whether it's Gucci or one of the other, it would make, or not one of the other companies. It's not really we, though, right? Yeah. Is it? The, when I say Gucci, now when I Global, say we, like, I'm talking about minorities. Yeah. So how many of us are in those in those global companies? That's what I'm saying. No, this is our time to get in. Yeah. As opposed to, you you think it's better serves to get in as opposed to starting something new and it taking, however, yeah. tw Angie, 50 years, 20 years. Hip-hop will be done, moved on to something else by the time we get there. Mm -hmm. And then we new, need new influences. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, I get that. Yeah. I, th I That's think, hip -hop don't you think both can happen simultaneously? And should be happening simultaneously. Exactly. Because isn't a long-term goal or a goal to be able to, yeah, let's start our own and, and own our own and all you that. You said the golden words, simultaneously. But don't just focus. Just don't keep focusing on thinking that we should start from scratch. We got to get in the door and then on the floor as well. Don't you? Do you agree that, though, that it was a kind of inspiring show of power, the boycott? Okay, listen to this, Angie. What boycott have people of color ever had in America that has zero results? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> zero <laughs> results. We come out and boycott without a plan, Angie. Without a plan. What, what, what thinking man would do that? What thinking man would just say? Well, just I think the plan was I think the plan was if you don't respect us, we will not spend our money there, and that will eventually that's affect you. That's not a you. plan. That's a reaction. Mm -hmm. That's not a plan. A plan is uh, how we how you gonna get you to pay for what you did, how you disrespected us, how you appropriate our culture. If you're worried about that part, then you can get that any day. But how we asking for reparation for slavery right now, right? Mm -hmm. That took place, and while at the same time. We are being, our culture is being appropriated and we're not getting any money. So what are we going to do, wait 100, 15 years from now or something like that mm -hmm. and ask for the money because they capitalize off the culture? Because we walked away from it? Mad at them? Mm. How much sense does that make? Are you getting a lot of feedback? Are you getting like pushback? You, you, can't you tell from my voice that I'm getting a whole lot? <laughs> yeah, I see, I see. I'm fired up right now. I just for you, I, know, I, Angie, I worry. I worry for I you. I want this part to be clear. You're Listen, such okay. You said, go ahead. I want this part to be clear. Mm -hmm. We who are on the front lines of this fashion, who lives depend on it, mm -hmm. and all these young people who have aspirations, we have to have a voice, and we got to talk to those 
who are who are sincere but don't understand how this game go. Mm -hmm. So if we can bring them two elements together, we can work. But just don't speak for out, you outside the battle. You outside the fight. It's easy for you to say that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So we got to bring that together. And we, just like you said, we have a street team and we have those that can infiltrate the corporations on all levels so we know how this goes. Mm -hmm. As an example, I get when I was in, living in East Africa for a while, when Jomo Kenyatta took over Kenya, right? What he said was, look, everybody or everybody who wasn't a Kenyan from, you know, they had a lot of Indians who controlled the, the middle class there. He told all of them that you have to have an indigenous Kenyan partner or you can't do business here mm. until they learn the business. And after five years or so, they couldn't be in that business no more. So we should be in them doors to learn the business. Yes. And then we can have our own businesses. What do you think about that? I'm, I'm not upset. It's a th I, I think all of these theories could be argued. Really? Well, I think, yeah, I think, I think it's all about perspective and long-term versus short-term versus bigger picture versus now. Like, I, I, honestly, I, could, I can see everybody's argument. Like I can get your argument, but I can also get other people's arguments. And you know what I mean? Which is no, I don't. I don't understand other people's argument. Well, you mean in terms of the boycott or yeah, just, results? I'm talking about results. That's all I'm talking about is results. Yeah, I'm just talking about results because that's what it should be all about. It should be about results. What are we going to get? You know, what are we getting? I think, and this probably doesn't affect you being in the fashion business, so you probably look at it differently. But just from a social, I think, I think it's understood that the black and brown community is not will not stand for for disrespect like that and i think it does scare other companies i think people see that type of rise up and it's and it puts people in place it's not maybe the grandest result inside of the fashion world that you're trying to get done and i respect what you're trying to do also at the same time but i do understand at least the idea and the notion what of what everybody angie, was trying to do angie 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 I'm just, well, we need to, I'm we just need saying, to, we need I to see look, both sides. All, all we need to do is go back and look at some footage from Martin Luther King coming across that bridge so that we can get on the bus. You know, we got to look at the footage when we couldn't eat in a restaurant and got beat down. We got to look at the footage where Jackie Robinson, when he started playing basketball, they, they invented new names to call us. Mm -hmm. We got to look at all the slings and arrows that they, they threw at us, and we changed it. Mm-hmm. We didn't walk away. Jackie Robinson say, "Oh, they call me this. I'm not gonna play baseball, basketball no more." You mm -hmm. know, we I didn't get off the bus because somebody said something to us. You know, stay on the bus. Uh, uh, the whole history of us, the whole history is the struggle. Is that okay? You said that, but you ain't stopping. Just the educational thing. We going in that school. You throwing spitballs at us and all that out there. That ain't. This is what we going through now. Is nothing. This blackface is nothing compared to the journey and trials and tribulations we went through. And we going to beef right by no. Let's kick that door open wider. What are you talking about? Yeah. What is they talking about? I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> oh, poor dad. <laughs> you you unfortunately had to been put in this situation now, right? Because you... I'm going to speak because I know the history. They call, they call Malcolm a traitor. He's a hero today. They call Martin Luther King, Uncle Tom, and he's a hero today. Some people got to stand up, and people might not understand their position till later on. I can deal with that. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. I come from nothing. I know how to get something with nothing. Mm -hmm. So it don't bother me. Mm -hmm. I went. I didn't show it. I go back to the curve, go back to the table on the sidewalk. I don't have no problem with that. I take <laughs> trains and buses now. Mm -hmm. I ain't trying to live like you that. You take the train like this? Because you're not blending. You don't blend in that. I blend it. Let me tell no, you something. No, you do not let me tell you, let, me tell you, let me tell you what a young guy told me on the train. Right. Yeah, but then you on the train? I said, yeah, I'm on the train because if I wasn't on the train, I wouldn't have saw you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but you know, I, I feel like I could take the train because I, I feel like I could blend in. Like if I have a little hoodie on and I'm just there a little low. Why are you making your face? I could absolutely take the train. No, I want him to know it's me. But you, from two trains, two carts away, I could be like, who is that guy? You, no, you stand man. out. I live two blocks, two and a half blocks from my store. I take three buses to get there. Mm. Two buses to get there and then walk three blocks. Every so day? everybody can see me so I can talk to them and let them know I'm still them. I ain't never left Harlem, Angie. Mm -hmm. Even when they burned it down, when they was talking about burn, baby, burn, they burn it down, I went and bought. 
I got brownstone in the home now. Burn, when they were saying burn, baby, burn, I was saying bye, baby, bye. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, you see it in my book. Uh-huh. You see it in the book. I'm I can't just, wait to read this yeah, book. You, Let me grab Yeah, my, you have oh, a different conversation, is. boy. You be saying, bring him back. No, I do want to bring you back. Please, <laughs> yeah. I have so many questions. So we, I'm mad we spent so much time on Gucci because you have yeah. so much history to talk about. Him. But I'm going to. I'm going to read the book. Yeah. What do people need to know about the book? They need to know the book about the book is like... um. It's beautiful too, by the way, just visually. You know what? The like this would be an extend uh, an extension of Pyrie Thomas down these mean streets, the Puerto Rican guy from East Harlem. Yeah, yeah. So this is that he needed to tell that story, you know. Uh, um, James Baldwin, if uh-huh. Beale Street could speak, uh-huh. he needed to tell that story, you know. And and the uh, other one. Cloyd Brown, I think it was Cloyd Brown, uh, a man child in the province mm-hmm. land. That story needed to be told. But this is the new story about the struggle from the bottom up. It's really beautiful. How long did it take you to write this? Oh, I think we worked on it about a year. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Does it have the whole thing of everything well, that everything happened? Well, everything is locked and... in me, man. As you see, I, I'm, I'm on fire with, with what my life has been about, man. I really think it's like people need to know what Harlem was like, how we, how we got into this trap we in now. They need to know old Harlem so they can understand the new Harlem. Mm-hmm. You know, and everywhere is Harlem because, you know, everybody in Harlem is from somewhere else. You know, family yeah. is from somewhere else. So that's important. What do we do? Like, what is next? What are we doing next? Well, uh, like, is there a next new- is the movie. Oh, good. Sony Sony's uh, producing an epic movie mm-hmm. that's going to cover the whole span of my life. Wow. Yeah. Like a doc or like a... Um, no, it's going to be a movie. A movie movie. Got yeah, it. Yes. As it should be. Do we know who's going to play you yet? No, it's going to be different versions from the time my family came up from the South. Me growing up, all my hustles and transform. It's a series of transformations in my life and what it's been like, you know, going to Africa, trying to find myself, you know? Yeah. The whole bit. Have you... Um, have you thought about anybody, though, in any of those? Not yet. Man, we got so many dynamic young actors now, mm-hmm. man. It's like, I thought about maybe somebody new so it wouldn't take away from the story. But, yeah. But I'm not worried about the acting now, because we out there, I mean, we're doing great work in, in in the motion picture industry right now. Yeah, it's pretty good. Even though I heard, who did I have? Oh, I had Master P. You know, Master P was here the other day, and he's doing his own movie, funding his own movie, right? And he was saying that 95% of the movie business... Uh, People of color are excluded from. Did mm-hmm. you know that? Like only five percent of the of movies are made by black or brown. Yeah, so we it's, um, it's a lot. Of it's life. a lot. It's a long way. So yes, we're yeah. doing well, but there's a long way to go yeah, there too. The movie industry is just like the fashion industry. We need to get in the rooms. Yeah, because you can lose a lot of money. You know, Kanye invested a lot of money in, in the fashion industry, and lost it was a critical he lost a critical amount of money and so in the movie business too we need to be inside them doors and 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 and, and partner up with people who are in there and know what we need to do you're amazing dad yo how about asap rocky oh man i'm so upset i know oh, that's yeah, your I'm boy you right me a chance to talk about that look i was uh, you see in my book that i was locked up in a foreign prison for nine months right Jeez. so it's a you know it's a hell of a situation to be i didn't in. i just got the book i didn't read that yet yeah, i didn't yeah. know that that yeah. Where yeah, were so, you? Yeah, I was uh, I was on this excursion going country hopping, playing the paper game. I ain't going to tell you about it because I'm going to make you read the book. Okay. But just, I'm, I'm in. Already, I was already the committed. The paper but... game, you're going to learn about how we get up, how we got to do from the bottom. So but you got anyway, locked up for nine months where? In, in, a, in, in Aruba. Wow. Just I had just left Venezuela. A whole... I can't tell you the whole story. Okay, fine, fine, fine. fine. Go ahead. I'll let you have fun. But anyway, with the situation with Rocky, I want everybody to know, man, when you go to these foreign countries and you are and you have an act, and I know you have your security, take your security to protect your body. But as soon as you touch down, get security from there who understands the people in that country mm-hmm. and can navigate any problems that come about. They could be a better shield for you than for you to approach the problem. Mm-hmm. You know, and they understand the laws. Like, um, <laughs> you don't want to get, we have this tendency of thinking though, like we have problems in America, mm-hmm. but America has a, a real great jurisprudence system. You know what I mean? What do you Compared mean? Compared to, uh, legal system mm-hmm. compared to other countries. Jesus. We catch hell, but you don't want to get, you know, I'm, I've seen it. I've been in jail and locked up in a foreign country and my friends as well. But compared to other countries, right, 
This system here is a sweetheart. They rather there's some countries you rather be in jail here or free there. So where what the situation with Rocky is that, and I'm gonna tell all the rappers when you go on tour, just hire two guys from there. Let them have the problem. Mm. Let them have the problem because you get involved with that there. The people gonna might champion against you mm-hmm. because you're not from there. Let them deal with that problem. You know he can't you control t- the press there. He can't yeah, control man. anything. And, 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 mm-hmm. It's not gonna cost you much. Get two security guards. No matter what country you go to, get that. Let them deal with they with their own. You, you understand? I can't even believe he's there still, and I can't believe he, they have him in solitary. It's insane. You know what? Let me tell you something. Unless the policies change, when you get locked up in the country, like. They require that you stay in jail till you go to court. They can do that. They can require that you can't see nobody because I went through that. The only one you see is somebody from the American consulate. The American consulate, no matter what country you get locked up in the world, is required to see you at least once a month unless you have an emergency and you send them a letter to them. But that's it. Jesus. Yeah, that's what you're facing. You know what? I'm going to tell you an important picture to see. Um, Midnight Express. Mm -hmm. Midnight Express changed the way the whole world reacts to being locked up in foreign prison. So certain foreign prisons, so we have a relationship with certain foreign prisons, you can get sentenced there and then do your sentence here. If you see Midnight Express, which is based on a true story, and that changed the United States policy on how foreigners are treated in certain countries, you know? Wow. Yeah, but you people need to know that. It's very important yeah. to know that. When you touch down the gun, you don't know what's going to happen. People no. going to intimidate you. A lot of stuff we get angry about here and fight about that. You shouldn't, you should just, it's better to run than to get, because they go, They know how to use those laws against you, even people who ain't right. So if you get the security, get the security that's from there. Let them fight that battle. Yeah. You know? Poor Rocky. Yeah, that's, 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 that's I, I, I'm trying to get in touch with him. I, you know, I'm mental, ASAP Ferg. And um, I've been in touch with him. So he got people on in. Jay-Z is on and some mm-hmm. other people on, some politicians on. I'm just hoping it'll work out all right, you know. You mentor Ferg? Yeah, and his father. In what way? Like yeah, man, in fashion or in, in life? In life. In life. Yes, and his father before him. That's why he sought me out, man. He sought me out one day, and um, I was in the street and going to the store, and this car pulled up. I said, damn, who the hell is this? And he come out, and he told me, say, man, I've been looking for you for two years. My father told me all about you. What did you do for his father? His fa- I mentioned his father. His father, you know, oh, you don't know, his father, Ferg, D. Ferg, mm-hmm. is the one that did the, the logo for, for uh, Uptown Records. Oh, my God. I yeah. did hear that. Yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. he was the one that used to give all the parties in the park and stuff. But he was also uh, an artist, a mm-hmm. graphic artist. And I used to let him come in the store, give him his first screen, let him do silk screening, let him write stuff like that. That's what we need to do. We need, we need that chain that goes down yeah Yeah. it's the big homie little homie program yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) so you reached out to ferg already yeah i reached out i called Ferg. we talk all the time anyway yeah yeah oh i hope everything works out okay for you that's that's crazy man i'm I'm, that's crazy yes well it is amazing to sit with you finally i could talk to you for two hours more (laughs) i have so many questions but will you please come back after i get a chance to read the book yeah 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 yeah, yeah. get into it i dare you but anyway (laughs) Anyway. When do people get it? Where do we get it? What do we? What oh, do we people get, need it's to at know? all Amazon stores. Mm-hmm. And um, every everywhere book store. books are stole. Yeah, every books where every place books you'll are have stole. you'll have a New York Times bestseller for sure. Okay, Dapper right. Dan, ladies and gentlemen, Dapper Dan. Yeah.